I wanted to say thank you and welcome uh, to the Active Transportation Plan public meeting. This is the beginning of the end for the Active Transportation Plan. So we've had two previous rounds of public meetings, and so this is our last round. We have three more public meetings next week. Uh, but thank you for taking time out of your evening to spend with us and uh, learn about long-range transportation planning. So we have some uh, partners with this. So the City of Fort Worth has been working with the Council of Governments with some consultants, Tool Design Group and Kimley Horn, who are here in the audience. And then we've also been working a lot with the Blue Zones Project. And if you've heard about this, this is a wellness initiative that the city's been going through. We were recently certified as a Blue Zones community back in November of last year. So we're really excited about that. But being able to have the opportunity to be active is a really important part of the Blue Zones Project. And so that's how this was made possible, is so that we could make these opportunities available for everybody to have the choice to be able to walk or bike to transit. So our meeting format today, I'm gonna to give you a presentation. It's probably gonna be about 20 minutes. I'll try to keep it fun and exciting. Um, and then we'll have an opportunity to go into the, to the back and talk through some of the maps in more detail. So active transportation is a fancy way of saying activity, walking, biking, including people with disabilities, to be able to get to their jobs, to transportation, to have fun. Those are all important parts of active transportation. And so as we go through this, we're looking at updating some of the different planning uh, processes that we've been going through over the past 10 years or so, such as the Walk Fort Worth plan, which was adopted in 2014, the Bike Fort Worth plan, which was adopted in 2010. One of the cool things about this is this is our, our first trails master plan. We have actually planned for trails before, but we haven't had this sort of comprehensive look at planning for trails as uh, we've gone along and, and actually planned these trails, which is kind of funny because we have a really great trail system. And then some of the other coordination things we're doing, we're working in tandem with the transit piece, so Trinity Metro, the, the Trinity Metro uh, update to the master plan, and also some of the other things like complete streets. And then if you've heard about the city's race and culture task force, there's some recommendations that have come out of there about prioritization in, of sidewalks and spending money in those areas to improve the equity uh, of transportation in, in those areas. So some of the existing conditions, I talked about some of the plans that, that we've gone through and some of the ordinances and things that we've done over the past 10 years or so that have really moved us towards having a, a, a more connected and active city. But we haven't had a very strategic way of spending our money. So this is part of what we're looking at to move forward is a strategic plan uh, rather than the opportunistic way that we've been implementing projects. So even with that opportunistic way of implementing projects, so you'll see that you know, bike lanes stop at intersections, you'll see that sidewalks end prematurely, they don't continue. So that's the opportunistic way that we've been um, building this kind of, of, of transportation. So even with that, we've made a lot of progress uh, with having relatively few dollars associated with that. So we're hoping that this plan is going to help move the needle even further as we go forward. So one of the things that we're really looking at is pedestrian safety, and we've looked at the numbers, and the pedestrian fatality rates in the city have gone up dramatically uh, over the past few years, and so this is something that we're really looking into and how we can prevent those future deaths from, from happening. So we also looked at existing conditions of the comfort. And so this is something that's, that's often been something that's hard to quantify. So for walking, what we've done is we've looked at the data associated with how fast are the roads, how many people are driving on those roads, are there sidewalks? And so we crunched the numbers and put that all together into a score that tells us basically what the comfort level of those roads are, just based on data. So this map shows the levels of comfort from green being good to red being poor. So in this case, sidewalks mean comfort for a great majority of these roadways. So a lot of these are orange. Um, there's some green, which means they've got sidewalks. They're probably in a neighborhood. Uh, so it's probably a pretty comfortable place to walk where you've got the orange. There may not be sidewalks. They may not be in good condition. Uh, there may be a lot of traffic. Uh, that's going really fast right next to the roadway, so that 
decreases that comfort level. And then we did the same thing for bicycle level of comfort. So we did that number crunching with the speed and volume of cars going through the areas. You can see that, that actually it's better for bikes generally in the residential areas. So once you get past those residential areas and you try to cross the road, so you cross that really large arterial, then you start having problems and you're pretty much boxed into your area. Uh, so that's the difference between the, the bike and the pedestrian level of comfort. So I've, as, as I've mentioned, we've had two previous rounds of public meetings. Our first round was in spring of 2018. And so what we did is we wanted to know what the existing conditions were, what the barriers that people were facing, what the opportunities they were facing, uh, things that we can do to mitigate some of those issues. Uh, so we had a number of public meetings. We had an online survey. Our second round, we looked at um, the, the draft uh, bike and pedestrian and trail network. We wanted to get some comments back on that. So we got a lot of, of feedback on that. We went out to a lot of different public events and that was, was really fun uh, in the fall. And so now we're on round three. So this is, as I said, our last round of public meetings. The, the next three rounds, uh, or three meetings next week are listed and so what we want to do in this round is really get your feedback on how we prioritized our projects what the policies that we're looking at so we can incorporate that into into the planning effort so how we've built the network is is really a three-pronged approach so what what are the the guiding principles that we want to make sure that we meet uh, when we're building the network when we're actually drawing those lines on where they need to go um, and then where they need to go so uh, the, the alignments, things like rail corridors, streams, things like that. And then how are we planning to build those so that everyone can use those facilities? So the guiding principles, uh, these are things that we looked at throughout the, th the, the plan. We heard a lot of feedback on these are the things that are important to us as walking and biking. And so they're represented in these pods of, of, of information. So equity being a really important piece that we've been talking about recently, uh, making sure that our networks are complete so they don't stop at intersections, they continue through the intersection, sidewalks don't just stop. So those sorts of, of, of guiding principles that make us look at the whole network, not just pieces of it. So out of that, we came to our draft bike network and so this is all color coded. And what you'll see on the map, so there's different colors. The green are independent trails. So you can think of the Trinity trails or the um, Arcadia trails up in North Fort Worth. There's some down in Southwest Fort Worth, uh, but those are basically your trails that are in its own right of way. So it's not adjacent to a roadway. The orange lines are what we were calling side paths, and those are, road, those are, those are trails that are adjacent to a roadway. Uh, so you think about a wide sidewalk is, is generally what that looks like. And so those are planned to be along our future roadways as we build out. So you can see a lot of those orange lines in the outer areas. Those are planned to be side paths, and so there'll be a nice wide area for walking and biking on both sides. And then the blue lines are our on-street bike facilities. So what we're doing with that is we're not actually associating those lines with a specific bike lane or a bike route. Uh, what we're doing is when it's time to build those, then we'll come back and look at what's the appropriate, comfortable way that we need to build that for the surrounding land use. So it could be that it's a bike lane. It could be a separated bike lane. So there's a physical barrier. There could be uh, just a bike route, and that's um, you know a sign with directional uh, information in a neighborhood. So we'll be looking at that, and we have as part of this plan built in how you actually make those decisions to build for a comfortable network. And so similarly for our pedestrian network, we have the the same trail and side path networks, but then we've also built in things like. Uh, adjacency to transit because we know that it's important to be able to get to transit for the people that are riding it and also in the high demand areas so we're, we're talking about places where there's a lot of population density a lot of employment density uh, areas of poverty and areas of equity and so those are all part of that pedestrian network 
And so when we talk about having a comfortable network and, and, and looking at how we design those bike lanes for, for every user, um, things like uh, separated bike lanes on busier streets, looking at uh, making sure that there's ADA accessibility along the, the route so that the ADA ramps are in where they're supposed to be, where we've got um, signals that are appropriately timed for people biking and walking across. So those are all really important pieces of the comfortable network that we want to build. So all that data we put together, uh, we put together a prioritize, prioritized uh, criteria. So we have different criteria for each type of facility. So sidewalks have their own prioritization criteria from trails and from bikeways. And so one of the things you'll note is that side, sidewalks, the equity piece is 40%. So 40% of the score is for equity. And we're looking at areas where there is a high poverty rate, there's a high uh, persons with disabilities population, or where there's a high uh, population of uh, a minority community. And so those areas are prioritized at 40%. So one of the things we looked at as part of that was uh, how are we associating safety with that? Is, is it okay that safety is, is lower than equity? So we ran this analysis that you see on the map on the right side that shows the areas of equity overlaid over the areas of bike and pedestrian crashes. And what we found is that a disproportionate amount of crashes are happening in those equity areas. So we know that prioritizing sidewalks in those areas is really important to help with the pedestrian fatality rates and pedestrian crashes that, that we've been seeing. We also ran some preliminary costs. So this is for our bike network. We have a, a very high amount of, of dollars that we've associated with, um, with these facilities. So the side paths along existing roadways, we're looking at close to $100 million. So this is where the prioritization really comes in key is that's a lot of, uh, it's, a, it's a huge cost for very little amount of, of dollars that are actually associated with these, with these projects. Um, the trail network uh, is $744 million. Again, the prioritization is really key in helping us determine where we need to spend our dollars. And the on-street bike portion is actually much cheaper at $44 million. And uh, again, given the funding amounts that we've had in the past, the prioritization is key to be able to make the investments that we need to make. So similarly with sidewalks, we also prioritized these and we created a cost associated with that. So citywide, we're looking at over a billion dollars in sidewalk gaps. And so that's just areas where there's no sidewalk. So the prioritization helped us determine what are the highest needs in different sorts of areas. So looking at the areas where there's a high minority population, areas near transit, areas where there's a high percentage of people with disabilities. Schools are always a big concern for kids walking to school. So we were able to pull those out and so we can actually determine which are the highest of the highest needs. So even those, those priority numbers are still a high amount of funding needed to be able to finish the, the high priority projects. So things even like the, the near schools, looking at $15 million, that's just for those material costs. So we can imagine that those, those costs are probably going to be higher if you factor in things other, other things related to building a sidewalk. So we also have some policy recommendations in the back. Uh, we've got this, this slide as a, as, a, as, a, as a board. So we wanted to make sure that the plan itself had all the pieces of the plan theme. So things like accessibility is really important for us to make sure that we're really looking at how we're designing our sidewalks to make sure that people in wheelchairs can easily access the businesses nearby, the transit nearby, uh, making sure that we're coordinating with different agencies and different staff members as we're planning these projects to make sure that, that we all know what's going on and we're all making the same decisions safe and comfortable. This goes back to the, the comfort factor and making sure that 
that people feel comfortable as they're, as they're traveling along these facilities and safe. Uh, those are very important things. So just a few of the selected policies that we pulled out. So the, the ADA transition plan is a Department of Justice requirement that needs to be updated. And this is something that the city needs to do to um, understand and inventory the areas where we need to actually improve the curb ramps and the sidewalks to make sure they're ADA accessible. It goes beyond that, but that's the, the major piece of, of this recommendation is those sidewalk pieces. Consider adopting a Vision Zero policy. So this is a, a plan and a policy that says that no death uh, is, is, should be allow, allowable, no traffic fatality. So we want to go towards a zero fatality. It's the, the notion that all deaths are preventable through engineering design and through education and things like that. Um, and then one of the things that we, we continuously get feedback on is we need to keep educating people on how to use bike lanes, how to use sidewalks, and how to drive around them. And then we're also looking at some draft performance measures. We haven't finished that process yet, uh, but we're looking at some of the target rates that we want to meet. So these are some of the recommendations that we're working forward now. So things like reducing crashes, increasing the number of ADA accessible curb ramps, um, building sidewalks in these mi majority minority areas, and then also making recommendations on funding. So if, uh, annual funding recommendations for maintenance of bike lanes, for striping of bike lanes, for building trails and building sidewalks. So as I said, we're sort of at the beginning of the end and we've got uh, three more meetings next week and we'll be hopefully publishing our draft plan to the, to the city's website in February. We'll be doing a lot of presentations to boards and commissions and we're looking for a council hearing in April. So beginning of the end, it's, uh, it's, looking, it's looking good. I think this plan is a, a great process so far. Um, and, and we've got a, a really good product, I think. So uh, my contact information is on this website. My colleague, Jeremy Williams, who's in the back, is also on this website. So if you have any specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. My contact information is also on the website. There's a lot of information from the previous public meetings. They have all been recorded. And so if you want to go back and uh, watch those, please feel free. So opportunities for feedback. So we have several different ways uh, tonight and as we go forward to uh, give input. So we've got uh, some display boards in the back and we've got opportunities to make comments uh, on, on any of the information in the back. We also have comment forms out in the front that you can pick up and you can take home and email back to me um, or you can just send me an email um, on that website. So that is the end of my presentation. I thank you for listening to me, uh, and, and I hope that, that we can answer all your questions this evening.